Normally, when we talk about a book on our show, we invite the author. But this morning, we can't do that because the author of this award-winning book, The Mermaid and the Messerschmitt, passed away many years ago. However, her book continues to live on through Terry Tegnazian, president and co-founder of Aquila Polonica Publishing. Good morning. Good morning, Christy. Thanks so much for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure. I, um, I was very moved by this book, I have to be honest with you. And um, when I realized the author was no longer here, I started asking questions like, who was she? So I'm gonna ask you, Rulka Langer. I know you have some beautiful black and white pictures of her. Tell me about her. Yes, she was um, born in 1906 in mm -hmm. Warsaw, Poland, but she was a very modern woman. She came from a family that was educated, middle class. Her dad had died when she was a baby. Her mother raised her and her brother alone. When Rilke was 14, she went to work a little bit while she was in school to help support the family, and after college, worked as an advertising copywriter. Wow. She um, was a very strong woman, I yes, can tell. Yes, she was. Her, uh, at the time she was married, had two children. Her husband was a Polish diplomat who had been posted in the United States when the war broke out. She was in Warsaw, still working at the Bank of Poland with their eight-year-old son, George, and their three-year-old daughter, Anya. They were living with her elderly mother in Warsaw. Now, the book, it's called The Mermaid and the Messerschmitt. Can you tell me what that means? Because I really don't even know. Well, sure. The mermaid, the warrior mermaid, is the symbol of the city of Warsaw. And the Messerschmitt was the main fighter-bomber plane used by the Germans during World War II. Oh, okay. And I know the book is written through her eyes during World War II um, in Warsaw, Poland, correct? Yes, yes. It covers the first six months of the war. Um, Rilke was an ordinary, average person who was really caught up in the chaos of war. And her primary focus, of course, was to protect and provide for her family and secondarily to help in her community. During that first four weeks of the war, Warsaw was very heavily bombed. And in fact, everyone knows about the London Blitz but the first blitz was really Warsaw. The city was very heavily damaged. Pal palaces were ruined. You know, main, the main shopping district was totally decimated. And that's something that we don't all know. Now, Rulka, uh, she was just a civilian. She wasn't a soldier. She wasn't trained for anything, but she pitched in and helped. She volunteered to dig air raid shelters with other citizens of Wars Warsaw. She volunteered to work on a first aid squad. Uh, during the first day of the war, she realized when she put her gas mask on that her hair was getting in the way. So she went to the hairdresser and had him cut it very short, like a boy's. Um, during the bombing, she's very honest about her feelings. Uh, she felt real mortal fear, which really changed her, her forever. And, and I know the book is, is very powerful in the sense that it talks about like the inner hero really in all of us, wouldn't you say, Terry? Y yes, I absolutely believe that's what it is. It's, it's how we draw, when faced with circumstance, we're able to draw on the deep resources within us to meet the challenges that, that we face. What I'm trying to understand is why you felt the need to keep her story alive. Why did um, you do that? This is um, really a very unusual book uh, about World War II because it's written not by a politician or a diplomat, it's written by a working mother who essentially was functioning as a single mother because her husband was abroad and she was in the sandwich generation taking care of her children on the one hand and her elderly mother on the other. She writes in a very lively style, um, really brings it to life, she brings in humor, she brings in a little sarcasm and she's very honest about the challenges and the fears. Um, her story is one that's disappeared from history and in fact the entire story of Poland in World War II, Poland was one of our allies, it fought with the United States, it helped us win World War II so that we could enjoy the freedoms we have today and yet that story is forgotten. I think it's so important that it stay alive and that it be remembered. And I can see your passion behind yeah. this book and, um, and behind Wilka. Can you tell me how it changed you? Well, her tenacity, her creativity in facing different challenges during the war, um, her refusal to take no for an answer really inspired me. I think it's something that we can all take to heart, learn from, remember, um, that when you face obstacles, you just keep going. And I can tell you, although I haven't been in a war, I did start a second career from scratch. And starting a publishing company takes a lot of tenacity. But um, as, as you said, I, I really am passionate about telling this story of this forgotten history. I think it's, it's something that 
the world needs. The world needs heroes, and it needs to know that there's different kinds of heroism. And I think Ruka would be very happy. Thank you. Thank you very much, Terry. Thank you. To learn more about the mermaid and the Messerschmitt, please visit Poland, WW2, that's the number two, dot com.